Okay, so uh, I'm Andy from Seat Doctors Leather Dime, and I'm using this old Porsche seat to demonstrate a couple different application options uh, that are mentioned in the instructions. For instance, for one, uh, you have the rub on method where you can take a, a lint free paper towel and apply some dye to it and buff in some dye just into the cracks. But also, this seat's a really good candidate because you have some wear here that the rubbing method uh, won't cover. And so you can use a paint sponge to apply color to this area and it'll touch up really nicely. So this one bolster right here we're going to focus on for this video. And we'll, we'll be able to show you not only how to do the rubbing method, just using a paper towel to buff in color and the paintbrush method as well. So the very first thing you always want to do with leather dye is to test the match. And so the best way to do that is to do it possibly in an inconspicuous area. So uh, if I'm testing the match of a, of a color, uh, what I like to do is uh, I'll use a cosmetic wedge. And cosmetic wedges work really well for uh, small coverage areas as well. If you're just doing a small area, you know, about the size of a half inch by one inch, uh, those little cosmetic wedges work great. But you'll just want to dab in with a little bit of dye right there, inconspicuous area. If it doesn't match, you can always wipe it off with some solvent and a rag. And uh, you don't have to use an air dryer to hasten the drying process, but it does help. Uh, you always want to use low heat though. So, oops, I'm going to turn this to low heat and just let this dry and see how good it matches. just disappears, just disappears in the leather. So this is a good match. So we're gonna actually work on this bolster right here. So first step you always wanna do, which has already been done with the seat because this can take a little bit of time, is just to give the seat a good scrub down with a uh, non-alcohol or non-ammonia based cleaner. Simple Green is fantastic for that. It's biodegradable water-based solvents and still can really get some of the crud out of the cracks because when you're wanting to fill in cracks like this, you're going to want to make sure there's no contaminants, no silicone uh, sealers in there or anything that are gonna uh, keep the dye from adhering to the leather. So this bolster's already been scrubbed down. Uh, if you have a lot of crud in the seat, uh, a Scotch-Brite pad works really well. Just with the warning that if you are gonna scrub down with Simple Green or uh, Lexol, Lexol Cleaner works really well as well, the orange bottle, Lexol works really well because that's also water-based and it's pH balanced for leather. Uh, but you can give it a light scrub down with a Scotch-Brite pad and that can sometimes get uh, more, more uh, contaminants out from the leather before you go to apply dye. So you want to make sure that the surface area that you're treating is super clean and super dry. So this is super clean and super dry. So you might wait an hour or two after cleaning it to make sure that the leather has no moisture left in it because that can also hamper the application process. So I've got the Porsche gray beige here. I'm going to take a lint-free uh, paper towel, fold it over a couple times, and then just pour in. You want to make sure you shake the bottle for at least a minute too. In shipment, it can sometimes settle because leather dye is water-based. So you want to make sure that uh, it's well shaken up. Make sure you got even distribution of color. And so, yeah, you're just going to rub in. You can either rub in straight up or do it in circular motions, but just push in some color just in those cracks. And what you're doing with this, since most of the seat surface area is still in good shape. You're not really wanting to apply too much dye to the entire seat surface. You're really just pushing in some color into the cracks. It's protecting leather is a two-step process. Um, you're, of course you're using conditioners several times a, a year on leather interiors. So that's keeping the, the rawhide underneath the top coat soft and supple. That prevents some of the cracking you see. I mean, this is a 30-year-old seat, so naturally you're going to see some wear on it. 
but you can tell the seat's been taken pretty well, it has been pretty well been taken care of over the last few decades. Clean and conditioned, clean and conditioned. And so the cracking on this is minimal. I mean, I see five-year-old automotive interiors with more damage than this. And so conditioner is going to protect, conditioner is going to protect the, the rawhide and keep it soft and supple, keep it from cracking. And then when you apply leather dye on top, you're protecting those cracks. Because as those little cracks form, now those cracks are susceptible to uh, UV damage. They're susceptible to uh, water damage. So the more you keep the, the top coat protected, uh, the more you're going to protect the raw underneath. So it's kind of a symbiotic process. You're protecting the top coat with dye and protecting the rawhide with leather conditioner. And so with a seat like this, you see it already looks a lot better. You can come back with just a slightly dampened paper towel and buff off the excess color. Just very slightly dampened. So this is just a squeeze bottle with a little, little bit of water. and uh, just basically like barely moisten and just kind of buff off the excess color. Now you'll see you're gonna start seeing some of the cracks again. This might take two or three coats of buffing in the, the color into the cracks and then buffing off a little bit of the excess you're going to see really good results just by following that basic two-step process. And you're seeing this, this really bad damage area up front. That's why the rub-on method won't really address when you've lost an entire piece of color. You know, if it's more than a dime size, you're really going to need to go back with a, a paint sponge and touch that up. I'm going to dry this really quick. Once again, low heat works best when you're using an air dryer. Uh, sometimes I recommend customers, uh, since you know it's their car, they can be a little more patient with it. Uh, they could touch up a, a seat with one coat on a Saturday morning and then come back on a Saturday afternoon and do the second coat. Another guy's not like um, latex paint where uh, latex paint, they say, oh, the, the, the coat, you know, the, the previous coat still needs to be a little bit tacky. You're doing at best coverage if the previous coat is still a little tacky with latex paint. But, but uh, leather dye is not the, the same way. The, honestly, the drier, the better the previous coat. It's still going to get adhesion. Leather, leather dye is porous, and so it's, it's still a top coat. It's still going on top of the rawhide, but it's it penetrating slightly into the rawhide. And so the more time you give it to, to penetrate, the better the adhesion is going to be on the, the next coat that you do. So you see I pushed in some more color in those cracks. Just buffing it in. Sometimes it can help too if you give it a little, little heat to dry. Let this dry just a hair before you go to buff it again with the damp cloth. And you'll notice the way leather dye is. The way uh, the way leather dye works. is that that light turn off on us. 
There we go. Let's get a little better light. And so you'll notice, uh, because it does absorb slightly into the, the rawhide, uh, you really don't have to worry too much about streaking. Sometimes with some interiors, like when you're painting, you have to worry about you have to worry about streaking, but uh, not with leather dye. You can actually, for the most part, unless you're applying super heavy coats, unless you're applying super heavy coats, you're pretty safe. Uh, even to, to do brush strokes on there because it's going to soak in really well into the leather. Can you pause that for a second? Now we're going to go back and do a third rub and coat. And yeah, you can already see that it's pushing in some nice color to the cracks. It's not having too much of an effect on, on most of the coats. So this method works really well on Lexus seats. You see a lot of Lexuses, especially the Lexus RX. It's fantastic leather. The RX is a fantastic leather. Uh, but they start to crack prematurely a little bit. It's not really deep cracks, it's kind of like this. So whereas on a Porsche it takes 30 years for those to show, sometimes you start to see them after five or six years on your Lexus RX or, or ES seats. It's an unfortunate fact, but it's really easy to touch up because you're not having to touch up the whole panel per se. You're just uh, rubbing in some color into those cracks and keeping those cracks from getting any deeper. But yeah, those Lexuses, you, you will see damage start to form even when the customer is being super diligent with conditioning and cleaning of the leather. You can see it right there. Uh, the dye is wet and just as it dries, it just, it just disappears in the leather. It just looks great. Off with a damp cloth, and the cloth off a little bit of the excess. Well, this seat still has a little bit of damage, it's more than just the natural cracking you're seeing of the leather. You've got to wear from just probably just from someone twisting out of the seat. This is the outside part of the, the bolster, and uh, you see most of the damage on the panel. You can see it on the upright as well, and it just comes from twisting in and out of that seat over years. It's just a natural, natural effect of, of uh, just getting in and out of that seat, just twisting out. I see a lot of damage too sometimes from folks, uh, you can tell they obviously had uh, riveted jeans. Or even customers who uh, very obviously like keep a holster gun on them. And you see just very particular wear when someone's uh, holstering a gun. Coming, going, going in and out of their car. So, we're actually not going to do this with the rag. I'm just going to take a second now and show the, the paintbrush method. And so, foam paintbrushes work best. These, is, these are these little 50 cent numbers that you see over at Walmart or Lowe's or Home Depot. And just like with the rag, you really are still trying to maintain uh, light coats. So, just a few light coats, just right here. I'm gonna push in and just do this, do this whole area. And you can do smaller areas if you want. I'm just doing this one panel for this video. So just some really light coats. You'll notice that these brush strokes will start to disappear as it dries.
once again, just making sure it is fully dry before you go to apply the next coat. So what happens with the leather dye, sometimes you can see this when you're painting, is that you go to apply the next coat and because the, the first coat is still a little damp, it just pulls it up. So you're not really applying a second coat, you're just kind of fattening up the first coat. It's really not what you want when you're touching up leather. It's super light coats with plenty of dry time is best. Super light coats with plenty of dry time. Otherwise, you can end up pulling up the original finish, or you end up just having, instead of multiple light coats, you have just one fat coat that can change the feel of the leather. And of course, uh, leather dye, because it's water-based, it's still going to take a couple days to cure out the rest of the moisture. And so, uh, this is still going to deepen just a hair over the course of a couple days. Uh, you're going to see the see it soak in just a little bit more as it wicks out the rest of the moisture in the seat. Go back over the whole thing if you want. Uh, and you saw I was a little impatient with letting it dry right here. And so you can see it happen again. If you don't wait for it to fully dry, you'll end up pulling up a little bit of the original finish right there. And so that's why you want to uh, exercise a little bit of patience because if the, the dye, the first coat hasn't fully dried up, you can pull up the original coat. And there are ways to address that too. Uh, sometimes the brush stroke method just isn't quite working for you. And so you may try just uh, blotting on them. And so for these small repair areas, a little, uh, little cosmetic wedge can do just the trick. So instead of, uh, instead of doing a, a foam paintbrush, which I think this is just a two inch, you might want to go wider or smaller depending on how much area you're touching up. I use two inch foam paint brushes all the time. You can just use a small cosmetic wedge and just do a small touch up area.
once again low heat. A hair, hair dryer can't damage leather. Maybe some, some of the more industrial commercial ones can, but this is a $20 Con Air 1875 from Target. I don't think that little hair dryer can generate enough heat to damage this leather. Alright, so that is basically it. So we got to demonstrate on this seat the, the rubbing method to fill in small cracks. And you can see there's still a few more cracks that can be filled in. Demonstrated the paintbrush method on this area. And also uh, going even smaller with demonstrating how to use a cosmetic wedge to touch up uh, tight areas uh, that need some attention. So hope this was informative and helpful for uh, all you uh, buyers of leather dye. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment uh, below in the video. You can always email uh, me at andy at seeddoctors.com. I'm always happy to answer questions. Uh, feel free to look at the before and afters on the website as well. Those give all sorts of insight with uh, doing leather touch-up on a variety of different kind of, kind of seats. Uh, but I'm always happy to answer any questions you might have, uh, both e over email or through the comments of this website. So thank you and have a nice day.